limited opportunity to welcome you all. I trust that you will enjoy the evening with us as you will learn some amazing information which I believe will change the way we all live. Technology changes lives. The last five years, when you look at how many new products and how many new things have come into our lives and have changed the way we live and the way we behave, the last five years, the last 500 years previous to that, if you add all of that together, it still doesn't amount to how much things have changed in the last five years. Every day, there's a new product that comes onto the market just because of technology. And one of the good things about it, it improves the quality of life for human beings. This evening, we're gonna share more information on a product that I believe will create a paradigm shift in the way we think and behave as it relates to mosquitoes. My name is Ian Gilbert, and I'm the Managing Director of Planetary Improvements Jamaica Limited, and we're the distributors of this product that you're gonna hear about this evening. So without any further ado, please help me to welcome the CEO and Chairman for Penta 5 USA, Mr. Charles Murray. Everything we're going to teach you tonight, my company is founded on the principle of wellness. So founded on the principle of no chemicals that can harm you, animals, or our planet. It's also founded on the principle that we're going to leave nothing bad for the future generations. And today's millennials, same millennials in America, the 60 million, who are very busy trying to take over mom and dad's house and never leave the home, use the internet to shop and blame us for everything that's wrong. I believe Jamaica has the same group of about 250,000 millennials, very busy eyeing what their parents did. So we're gonna talk about tonight a insect that's about, I guess the estimates are 150 million, 200 million years. Wars haven't killed it, sprays haven't killed, Everything to do is the survival of this incredible insect. And what we're looking at, the literature, the knowledge around the world that there are about 3,000 varieties of mosquitoes, but only 200 odd bite. And our impression, our wording we use is prevent the blood meal. In other words, if it doesn't bite, we're not gonna have disease. And in doing that, I have heard some people say, let's eradicate the mosquito. Well, do you realize if you eradicate the mosquito, how are you going to get pollination taking place? How are you going to get the five-foot vegetation to grow? So that would be very bad for us. The other side of the coin, let's eradicate everything to do with mosquitoes and people start using sprays. And I'm going to touch on the spray before our product. Imagine there's a gentleman and lady out there that's working for a city council or someone and says, go and spray that suburb. They go out, they spray. Or for a start, they're breathing what they're spraying. If it's designed to kill something, rest assured that person is not going to live a natural life. The second part is you spray a bush or a tree, and then it rains. And all those chemicals fall in the ground. So first of all, spraying the tree, we're going to kill butterflies and bees, as well as the mosquito and all the other insects, and even birds. The small birds are in the nest. If we take what now falls off to the rain into the ground, the worms in the ground are now suddenly saturated with chemicals. The bird picks up the worm, you catch the bird, you're eating chemicals. Some of the water after heavy rain goes into the underwater stream. The fish are now exposed to chemicals. You eat the fish, you have that. If we look back to one particular product called DEET, in around the 1940s, the military were looking for a solution. And of course, being a government-run organization, they had to go with a cheaper solution. They could have gone with a solution that cost money, but they weren't going to do that. And it could have been sweet grass. We would all be perfect without DEET. But they chose DEET because it works, but they had no idea. No one 50 years ago could even think that it could harm the human body. We believed absolutely in what the government told us. We believed what we read in the press. We believed what we read in the newspapers. We were, that was our upbringing. Government told us all. Meantime, it was kept very, very secret. Dr. John is going to touch on some of the, the dangers of DEET and other chemicals. But back again to that spraying. Miami, you might recall last year, had the big Zika virus. Miami, the mayor was in shock, and everybody was talking about tourism collapsing. And 
Suddenly, somebody had the solution. Let's put nail it. It's a spray banned in Europe. It suffocates the user, the person spraying, but it also suffocates every type of insect that's out there. Our company led the march. We had big signs saying, no nail it, not allowed in Europe. And the mayor saw that and understood and banned the spraying. So we know we can do things correctly. And so if you're hearing spraying in your suburb or your area, you should be asking whoever's in charge, what is inside that spray? Am I or my grandchildren going to remember that you sprayed? Because if you remember, you wipe out bees, you're wiping out the food chain. And what is terrible today to look at is the number of bees that are, are dying, the beehives. In the United States, we're down 25% a year. This is horrific for future growth. We're situated in Sarasota, Florida. If you don't know where that is, you know Tampa, Orlando, Miami. We're just a little bit south of that. Sarasota is a Sarasota that came from the Spanish, General Soda, named after his daughter. So it's about a 300-year-old colony or, or little village. Very modern today, lots of water, lots of mosquitoes, and we're right there. Our particular company is on a river, little stream behind us, and when we developed the product, we built a small golf course so that we could measure the bites in the morning. And I'm very pleased to say that after 26 months since we developed the product, we've not had one spray in our suburb. They've never sprayed. We have zero mosquitoes biting, and we were recalling every day who got bitten, who didn't get bitten. And what's happening on that little stream, all the factories around are cleaning the stream. All the grass is growing. There are outdoor offices. So this is what we envisage eventually everywhere. If we can have mosquitoes, we can live alongside them, but they're not coming for a blood meal. So I invite any of you ever coming to Sarasota, open invitation to visit us. The company is Penta 5. Penta is 5, and 5 is 25. We have 25 products. 10 are available now as wellness, and another 15 are in the R&D stage. What is for sure, none of them are chemical. Everyone is there to protect you. Quick side, myself, my background, my accent you might have seen. I'm sure many, many of you know. I am an African-American. I am from South Africa. I am now American, so I'm joining the gang, and I am here. I'm very proud of that. I won a scholarship through there. I started in Zimbabwe, South Africa, and then uh, Michigan, and now Florida. Um, next to me is Dr. John. Dr. John has run several universities. Very, very knowledgeable in the world of looking at agronomy. And he comes with a heart of having had malaria, so he can understand what the mosquito can do to you, what it can do to a child, what is the survival rate. And so we're very fortunate to have him in his background. And he's going to talk on the technical side softly just to show you what we're avoiding by using chemicals. And finally, Ian has introduced himself. Ian is one of these young men, very, very proud, he's Canadian and also um, from Jamaica that looks ahead and wants to do something that he wants to leave. I met his father tonight. Be proud of your son. This is something when you're earth-shaking, when you do something different. And let's give him and his father a clap, I think. there. That's our plant. We have about 150,000 square feet, which roughly is about 20,000 square meters operating for the factory. Our big part of it is to save our world. You might have seen some of my captions before. I am, I'm actually a fanatic about the carbon dioxide footprint. If we can prevent leaving, if we can prevent leaving any source of contamination behind, if we can manage our, our waste. So in Florida, big leader, if you look at me on the internet, you'll find 18 years ago, I took people from Florida Power and Light to Japan to show them the waste to energy plant. It means all the garbage in Japan is cut to 25 millimeters square and burnt. And that gives them the three products that never goes in the ocean, never goes into landfill, therefore we leave no carbon dioxide footprint. That's really our aim in everything we do. We shouldn't leave anything behind. We won an award, one of five American companies awarded from overseas called Earth Charter. That means everything we're doing is protecting the earth that we live in. It's a, probably of all the awards I have, and that's one I'm really, really proud of, because we really have led this huge industry in showing them that we are protecting. We use the word C-Camp, it means sustainable. We all know sustainable, can you use it again? Environmental, are we gonna be dangerous? And then we put two words in, which is conscious approach. In other words, make an intelligent, intelligent decision. Uh, one of the less intelligent decisions around today is let's destroy the straw. The straw is 0.01% of pollution. <laughs> the cigarette butts are 20% of pollution in the ocean. 
I would see where you want to head, what you want to protect. So somebody took a stand, which is superb, but we need to look at the greater picture if we, if we really want to make a contribution. We did win an award, which is very unusual for DuPont to award an American company. We won an award for a pouch that I'm going to discuss with you today. We're very proud of that, and it is a first and will be the DuPont Award. Let's talk now the first protection, repellents. So our repellent is called anytime, means you can use it anytime, everywhere you are, anytime, anytime, anytime. We've got that trademarked, and it's very clear. The first one is called anytime no bite. It's a repellent. It has a lot of good work on it. It lasts for six hours. And unlike the competition, if you read very closely, by the way, if you go down to the hotel room, or the hotel store, you'll see some products there. And you look at them, and it's got a, one of them's got a family on the front. Looks great. Mother, daughter, small. And then I read the small print, and it says, not for children. So mother's busy, kids are screaming, father's running it out the store, wonderful product. Small print, very small, not for children. Do not use it on your baby. Do not let anybody touch it. Done. Crazy. Because then it's also got another statement on the back which says, if you've used our product, please make sure you wash it off. Now, how many people put it on at night to protect the kids? That means the kid's lying all night with this poison on the skin. These are the things we are trying to protect. So there's a second product there. It was an aerosol spray. Same thing. This one was clear. Not for children. Not for anybody with any sort of plastic clothing. <laughs> Just the list of not, not, not. If you see the words not for children, that means they die faster. It doesn't mean it doesn't work on you. You will just take longer to die. So anybody that's, can you imagine the car industry saying our brakes only work a little bit of the time? You know, you wouldn't touch the car. So here we're saying don't use it on your kid, but you can use it. Please examine closely what you're purchasing. And it can only come from the public saying, I'm not buying it anymore if it's not good enough for kids. And then we come to, if you don't know think about the mosquito, she has five targets in life. Her first target are pregnant women. And why pregnant woman? She's busy. She has a baby on board. And her temperature is two to three degrees warmer. And if you're a little bit warmer, it means your blood, your skin is easier to get into. So she likes to bite mosquitoes. The second one is ladies who are having their monthly period. The same thing, a little irritable, a little hot under the collar, a little bit warm, another target. Third one is people with cholesterol. People with cholesterol have high temperatures. Again, your body is ready for her to come. The fourth one is people that have aroma, that people that sweat, your body's open. And then she's tired in that area and she starts looking at the male and saying, okay, there's no woman here, there's nobody with these problems, let me look at the male. She goes off to the male under our arm here because we don't put cream there, behind our legs. We, no men, I've ever seen a man treat the back of his legs. But it's full of sweat, it's just perfect for her. So she bites us behind our ass, she bites us behind our legs, behind our neck, not in the front normally. So there's her five targets. And then she looks at the family pet, and she goes down in that order. So what has happened to us in the last 10, 15 years? We've got air conditioning. We've done a lot of things to make it comfortable. The mosquito likes to eat and drink. So air conditioned homes has created a home mosquito. So from years and years of outdoor spraying and everything, I left at Miami spraying the Zika. The mosquito was inside. So we killed every, mosquito, every butterfly and every other thing, but the mosquito was in the home. And in the home, she started to eat like us. She's having three, four, five meals a day. And run away upstairs to get the water in the air conditioning and run down and bite you, then your dog and back and bite you. And people are saying, how did I get bitten? I never went outside. So this, this is what has happened today. So the mosquitoes are inside. And we're, we're in this anytime approach. So what we said is, well, let's put something on the skin that will give you at least six hours. You wake up at six o'clock, put it on, you got until noon without being bitten. In the Philippines, a lot of people are building roads today. They have a lot of stuff. Dr. John did a lot of work there. We have people in the outside in the most horrific conditions of temperature, uh, moisture, 10 hours with our product on without getting bitten. We claim the six hours because the standard for the, the word I want you to always look at with disgust, DEET. DEET claims six, so we have seven. And we can protect you in that period. That's very important. So any time goes on your skin, she won't come near you for that period of time. You can sweat. You can do anything. But the benefit for pregnant ladies, they can use it with no harm to their fetus. The benefit for young people, they can use it. You can safely put this on at night without having to take it off your kids. So we've developed that. We've developed a no-bite spray. Um, 
Dr. John will tell you, he's a great, he thinks the spray is better than the lotion. And that spray means you can spray yourself, you can spray the dog. If you have an elderly mother, father sitting on the patio, you can spray around their chair. You can spray when you do your evening walk, you can spray it on your animals. So we have developed this to help you lotion for the skins, spray for the immediate need around your home. If you have air conditioning, give the air conditioning a little spray. Let's upset the this mosquito that's living in the hotel that you provide it. So this is the area that we want to concentrate. So that any time, and you'll be getting samples, you'll be able to look at it. So now let's go to the next stage of the game. And this is people that get up early to play golf. I'm one of them. You get up early, you go to the golf course, and you disturb the mosquitoes that are rising with you. So we made a two-in-one called a combination. And some people don't know, do I put the no bite on first? Do I put the sunscreen on first? What do you put on first? Which is going to affect you first? So we made one that took the story out of it. You just put it on. It protects you from the mosquito, no bite. And it protects you from sunburn, no burn. Why is it important on the no burn? You hear some people saying, well, I didn't burn too badly today. I'm getting a little brown or a little shiny. You're damaging the outer layer of your skin. If you damage the outer layer of your skin as you get older, this becomes very crackly. It becomes a problem. So we've made sure that all our lotions, and particularly our suntan lotions, protect the skin. We've really looked at that and said, okay, this is important. So we have the two, the no bite anytime, the no bite combination, no bite, no burn. Coming very soon is our own suntan and sunscreen lotion. That lotion has been totally developed to not only protect you from the sun, but if indeed you have had a sunburn, or if indeed you've got a few cracks in your skin, it will repair those cracks. And there are a couple of young men in the room. I don't see too many young ladies. Oh, there are a couple of young ladies. The terrible, terrible pimple. If you have the pimple, put some of our cream on and watch it disappear. We can repair. We can look after acne. We can look after any sort of cracks in the skin. And whilst we don't claim that because of all the rules and regulations, what we do say is good for the skin. It can help you with the skin. It provides moisture for the skin. So we're bringing out these three any times. One to stop biting, one to help you with sunburn, one to help you with no bite, and one final one to protect your skin in the event of being outside. So these products are coming, and, and they're important for you because this is your quality of life later on. And you get young people that have scratched and so on. And by the way, if you haven't had time to put this on and you get bitten, that bite's very, very irritating. Put the cream on top of the bite and say bye, goodbye to scratching. So it does a repair function for you. So that's something to remember if you do happen to get bitten and, uh, and you don't want to suffer with the scratching. So we're going to go through some of the, the areas of importance. What I like is we, when I talk to people about it, the first or next question is, okay, great talking. How do I know it works? Well, I'm very proud and very pleased that in Jamaica you have a very high standard and you wanted to have your government officials, your universities, check the product out. And so they did the tests. There's a beautiful report. There are many people in the house from Ian's company. And the university came back and says, yes, indeed, those claims you made work. The second one to back up the University of Jamaica is we had it tested in London at the London School of Malaria, of diseases, tropical diseases. Absolutely confirmed it. And then uh, in the States, you know, we have 50 states, all operate like 50 countries. New Mexico said, we want you to get two independent results. So then we had the California Davis in California. That's a very big university for checking. And they came back. And, and that professor, he called Dr. John up and said, what are you using inside this product? The mosquitoes are inside our test. Just go, go near the arm. And what we do is we starve the mosquito. And then we put the arm in with our product on and see if it'll bite. And it would stay away. He said, so I was a little surprised. What I thought I would do, not part of the test, he went out to some uh, forest with a lot of water and put it on to see out in the field what would happen. And he didn't get bitten. This is a great report from a professor, more than we asked him to do. And then the final one, we had it done in Florida at our university where they have different rooms where they actually put the mosquito in a little box. You'll see this picture of this now. And she's trapped. And she can either eat the blood, blood meal, or die. And she elects to die. That's how scared she is of the product. And this is important to know. When you have it on you, she's not going to come near you. And these are the kind of things that we really like. So we have a lot of information, and that's what this page is telling you about. 
So in summary there, we have the anytime, the combination, and we have the sunscreen. The tubes are available in 59 grams or available in 89 grams, depending on your budget. They're also, the next product line that we put it into, I rather like this one. I was in India last week, and in India, they're using the coil. You might have seen the coil. You light the coil, and you sit under it, and you and the mosquito breathe the poison. The mosquito dies, and you die later, but you, both of you are in that. So it was interesting talking to the largest company making the coils. He's elected the chairman. The chairman apologized. I don't know the guy from a bar of soap. said, I'm going to leave with one rule. We're discontinuing absolutely anything to do with the coil. What they have found, the person that lights the coil could actually get cancer from the ignition. The secondly, everyone that breathes the coil, the mosquito and you eventually both die. So he's stopping the coil. He's also stopping the wall electric plug-in. And he's going to our little vial pack. You'll be getting some samples. The vial pack is a small 5 ml vial pack. You snap the top open, and you can put it on you. It's a one-day use. So the vial packs come in a two-pack, and they come in a seven-pack. They also come in a 31-day pack. That means you have one a day. If you're in the hotel industry, our suggestion is as the customer arrives, you give him a vial pack next to the chocolate. So when they go to bed, they protect it for the evening or the morning. But this guy told me, just very quietly said, is your capacity able to handle one billion vial packs? So I looked at him and thought, wow, that's a great order. There's 1.2 billion people in India. So he was giving me one day order. It wasn't really much for the other 300 days. So what I'm getting at, the vial pack could be the big way to introduce it. Pregnant ladies, schools, your police force, your military, people going to sporting areas, everywhere where you leave your home, you could carry these in your bag, anything you want. It's very tiny, doesn't interrupt anything. So the vial packs are available. You'll get some nice samples. Uh, our person with the sample, oh, they're arriving. Our person will give you some. You'll be able to look at it and take it. You got one there? Here's the anytime there's something inside. And next to it is a little, a little envelope, which if you open the envelope, tear it open. Inside are two vial packs, his and hers. Snap it open. And then all you need to do, it's just easy to crack. You see how it does the crack? It stays on. And you put it on your skin. What I'm suggesting, put it on just a drop. There's nothing more than that. And then do a hard rub so you get some temperature. You get some temperature, you're getting in your skin. Get it all over. There's a little smell. The smell will dissipate in about 15 minutes. But the mosquito will know that you're untouchable. It will move on to the person next to you that doesn't have the mosquito pack. So if you have a bad friend, don't offer anything. Let them get bitten, and you sit there quietly smiling. So that's really the plan we have. Okay? So... The vial pack is really an intelligent way to carry it. It can be carried in your pocket. If you don't use it all, you just close it and ready for the next use. So we see a tremendous amount of efficacy in that activity in that. Hospitals, anybody, especially pregnant women, especially your younger kids, this is not a difficult one to handle. So 31 pack, one a day. Two pack, golf courses, tennis course, tennis clubs. Seven pack, people going away. So we have this under control in that area. Okay, back to my control. Um, introducing the mosquito pack, I've spoken about every one of those treatments. I'm now going to move to the product called Zone. Zone is a home or an area. This is a particular pouch, and I'm going to show you a video of this now that works, or Dr. John will do it in his talk. What we've done here is we've said, okay, you've got this any time when you're protecting and leaving the zone, but who wants to put this on when I'm home? Where the kids want to run outside. I want to go and get the mail. My mother wants to sit on the patio, I want to be safe. So we created this, instead of spraying, remember I'm anti-spraying, we're into a spatial product. You can't smell it, but she can smell it. So what you do is get the pouch, has the dry product, has the oils in the water in the bottom. And you take the pouch, it's presented this way. By the way, we learned in America, if we just put the pouch on the shelves in the store, people open it to smell it and they don't take it. So we have the protective pack on the outside which you take open, and then you remove the pouch out of it. And you'll see when we have the pouch, we have the dry product, we have the liquid at the bottom. You'll see a video of this now. We roll it until we snap this pouch. The dry goes into the liquid, so it's roll, shake, open, and hang. 
And for 15 days, this will send off an aroma, and the very, very happily flying mother, female mosquito, followed by a husband, all he does is follow her. She gets into trouble, she risks getting killed by resting on you, and he just circles and watches her. Nothing more. He contributes zero to life other than following her. It's a very obedient husband. He's just out there going along for the ride. What happens to the mosquito, with, she smells the odor coming off this pouch, and she flies there. And as she smells the odor closer to the pouch, it confounds her. In her DNA, she has about 85 protein blood receptors and about 300 glucose sugar receptors. And when she arrives there, she becomes completely confused. Where are the ladies? Where are the boys? Where's everybody? And she flies and she forgets, what am I doing here? Meantime, the eggs are hungry. So she feeds them what she eats, the sugar. And that means a whole litter of eggs, a whole larvae, are brought up without exposure to blood. And so for 15 days, you have this total protection around your home. If you have your house and you want to play in the backyard, you need one. But if you're playing in the front yard, you need two. If you have large premises, 30,000 square feet, that's about, uh, about 4,000 square meters, you need four, north, south, east, and west. The biggest rule you want, where the mosquitoes are, put the pouch between you and the mosquitoes. So they'll fly to the pouch, get confused, and forget you. That's pretty important. So we've developed this. This is what we got the award from DuPont for. So this is the first in the world where we're actually, if you want to use slang, turning her into a vegetarian. But we're not really. We're just confounding her, forgetting to look for blood. And this, this is very, very good. Now we get people that are going to sporting functions, very big fields, golf courses. You can't do that. So we have a sister product to this. It's an insecticide called Yard and Garden. And this is what you would spray away from you in these big areas, people that have one-acre homes. So you'd protect that. This is around your home. But the zone products for schools, the zone products where people are collecting markets, where you're worried about that, this is really going to be really innovative. So we have this available. There's a very nice video. You'll see this now. Um, what else can I tell you in terms of the unique selling point? One of the items on this, and um, I guess we'll tell you, what you're producing in is a low-quality wine because we're making a gas. So you shouldn't drink it. You should throw it away after 15 days, but you have actually made your own first time a home wine. So not so good, but it's there. What we can tell you, Dr. John will touch on what the rats did with it. That is also a nice story. Hotels keep bugs away from outdoor areas. This product works extremely well. The lotions, by the way, work on, I don't know if you call it in Jamaica, we call them in the States noceums. These, these annoying little things on the beach that bite you when you walk. It works extremely well on stopping them from biting you. So you have that, you put it on your pet, stop your pet from scratching. So it's important in that area. This is talking about where the mosquitoes will bite. I'm not going to tell you that. You've all been in biting zones. I'm sure you know what they're looking for. And I think, John, this is about you. It's the start of the video to come and talk. So with that, thanks for hearing about it, what our products is. The Spatial Zone Pouch is the easy, eco-friendly container that holds our patented ingredients. This three-time award-winning pouch has a specially engineered seal that is easy to break with pressure, allowing the dry ingredients to be mixed with the liquid ingredients to activate the zone aroma. One, tear open the holding pouch and remove the Spatial Zone Pouch. Two, locate the arrow on the back of the zone pouch and continue to fold over the pouch in the direction indicated and break open the special seal. Three, shake the zone pouch well, allowing the powder to mix into the liquid activator. Only break the temporary seal to mix ingredients when you are ready to use the pouch. Always remove the cap when the spatial zone pouch is activated. Hang the activated pouch at least 20 feet away from where you play. Make sure the cap is off so the aroma may begin to attract mosquitoes. The activator takes time to attract mosquitoes and then repel them after confounding them, so use our topical creams on the first day of use while you wait for activation. I'm just gonna focus on these four products uh, tonight that Charles has already introduced. And <clears throat> there are two words that I like to say over and over again, and that is safe and effective. Um, there are other natural products out there. 
there's really not anything out there quite like the zone. But there are other natural lotions and sprays. Uh, so what's different? What's the big deal about uh, Penta 5 and Mosquito Pack? <clears throat> the zone you've already heard a little bit about, um, it puts out carbon dioxide and lactic acid. So it looks exactly like a human being, or smells just like a human being at a distance of up to 100 feet and more. So if you look at that radius, you're talking about a fairly large area. In the United States, it's the size of the average backyard. If you've got mosquitoes in the front yard, it won't help the front yard if you've got it in the back. So it doesn't go through buildings. You're going to have to have one in the front and one in the back. But if you've got an open area, it does quite a large area, uh, really about 30,000 square feet, uh, or the better part uh, of an acre, about 70% of an acre. She knows for 70 to 150 million years, there's some argument about how old they are. They found them in uh, various fossil remains, and they're at least 100 million years old. In fact, there's even one theory that they might have uh, helped the demise of the dinosaur, because the dinosaur didn't disappear in one day. It took a lot longer. Uh, they do carry a lot of diseases now, and they probably did at that time as well. But 100 million years, she knows when she smells carbon dioxide and lactic acid, that means she's got a blood meal for her eggs, and the eggs need that protein. Um, she gets to the pouch, disappointment, because it's not a, a human being, there's no blood meal there, but she also now encounters something else that she doesn't like at all. So she's now totally confused. She's not going to starve, so she goes back to pollinating what she was doing before, before she had the eggs. She's still going to lay the eggs. I'm not going to tell you that we're going to eradicate mosquitoes. We're not going to be able to do that. In fact, I don't know whether that would be a good idea in the first place. Uh, it seems like when we make a big step like that in the environment, it always comes back to haunt us. They do a lot of pollination. And given what we're doing to the bees, we may need the mosquitoes for our food supply one of these days, along with some other things. Um, <clears throat> the eggs are laid. They're not quite as healthy. There may not be quite as many, but they are laid. They're going to reproduce. They're going to produce more males and females, and the cycle begins again. But at least you've got 15 days in that zone where you're not going to be bitten. Imagine a backyard free of pesky mosquitoes. Stop mosquitoes in their tracks with Secure No Bite Mosquito Pack products. Secure No Bite products emit an aroma that attracts mosquitoes while the powerful formula subdues her blood-seeking receptors. Becoming confused, the mosquito no longer seeks out protein to feed on, but instead looks for nectar. Secure No Bite products are created from organic and natural ingredients that are non-toxic and contain no harmful or deep-based chemicals. Safe for children and pets. The idea that it's safe uh, is extremely important to us, as Charles outlined for you in his, uh, his part of the talk. Uh, we've gone the extra mile with a lot of these things. We did have to show efficacy uh, before we could market the product and put uh, certain things on the label. But we really didn't have to show that it was safe for skin and toxicity reports. But we went ahead and had those tests done. In the case of the Zone product, um, we sent it to a lab in New Jersey, PSL, Product Safety Labs. And they fed rats 5,000 milligram per kilogram. That would be like one of us eating a pound of this stuff. And the idea with 5,000 milligram per kilogram is if the lethal dose, the LD50, if 50% of the rats don't die, you don't even have to put a warning label for toxicity on the product. Um, not only did the rats not die, none of them died, they actually gained weight. So they, the more of this they ate, the more weight they gained. And <clears throat> the same thing is true of the skin, uh, as well as the, uh, the oral and the dermal are, are both important. Um, <clears throat> the way it was tested for efficacy, Charles mentioned a little bit about this, but when I first heard what uh, Dr. Smith at Florida State University was going to do, that was our first test, I said, this is, this, you know, I believe in rigor, but this is a little over the top. 
he's going to aspirate out five females. He's going to put them in these little two-inch chambers, and there's an artificial skin beneath them with blood beneath that, the blood meal beneath that. So these mosquitoes are trapped in there. They can't go anywhere. They're all females. He makes sure to aspirate out five females, put them in. And then we have another group that has not been treated with anything. So we got a control and we got a treated group. The, the female would, has a choice. I can starve or I can take the blood meal. I can't fly away. And I told Dr. Smith, I said, in the real world, they can fly away and get nectar. You're not going to let them fly away. He said, well, that's the way we test all our lotions. I said, well, this isn't a lotion. I'm not sure. Well, it worked. We found the results between the uh, treated and the control uh, had reduced the bites at a, at a significance level of 99.53%. Uh, most of the containers with the five mosquitoes, none went for a meal. Almost all of the non-treated mosquitoes dipped their uh, their mouth into the blood. The next product is the no bite zone. We put it through the same sort of test. Now this was, this is a typical test for a lotion or a spray to treat the skin with that, uh, the artificial skin, put the blood meal underneath and see what happens. We gave the rats 5,000 milligram per kilogram and again all that happened is they gained weight. Um, their skin, there was no dermal evidence of anything going wrong with the skin and uh, they actually kill the rats at the end of this and look for any kind of uh, problem with any of the organs in the rat there were none they were as healthy as they were well after they killed them they weren't that healthy but they were as healthy as they were when the when the uh, project started um, <clears throat> they decided at Florida State University in our first test let's compare you to D let's not just look and see how uh, effective you are repelling. Let's, let's test you against DEET. Well, to give you an idea of the rigor of this study, DEET was about the best thing going. It didn't even keep the DEET away from the blood. They couldn't go anywhere. They were stuck there. So it was only effective at a 91.9% .9 and 92% level. We were a 100%. If you continue to follow this out to hour two, hour three, hour four, hour five, hour six, we finished the test at 96% effective after all that time, and DEET was 87%. So chemicals aren't necessary. They used to be because these repellents didn't last very long. You could get citronella, and it would work for 15 or 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes or so. Then you had to reapply it. So DEET always had the upper hand because it lasted a long time. It actually lasts so long because it gets into your body, into the bloodstream, into the placenta, into the newborn baby, into your brain, and so on and so forth. I'll show some results of that from independent peer-reviewed study at various universities uh, in a minute. In the mid-90s, the research on DEET started, mainly because of a scientist, a doctor at Duke, Duke Medical Center uh, in the US. A very uh, esteemed professor and I often wondered when he started publishing his, his results if he needed a bodyguard to go out because this is a multi-billion dollar industry <laughs> and he was reporting on things that I'm sure they did not want to hear. He found out that uh, soldiers returning from the Gulf War uh, had neurological problems. And he also surmised that the Vietnamese uh, fellows in the United States that were in the Vietnam War, uh, Agent Orange might not have been the whole story. It might have been Agent Orange and DEET. Because when the Army developed this, they had other things that were working about as well, but DEET was so cheap. You can make a truckload of this stuff for almost nothing. So the profit is huge on it compared to a, a more natural product. The research here by Corbell in 2009, and he's continued to work on this along with a score of other people now. Um, they knew DEET worked, but they didn't know why in the early 40s. Vietnam, they still didn't know why. So the guys over there were slathering this stuff on. In fact, the Viet Cong could smell them. The Americans are here. They could smell the DEET. They would spray the jungle with bullets without even seeing them. Uh, so we're actually developing a no-smell uh, repellent soon <laughs> for, the, for the military. But not that we're going to be back in Vietnam anytime soon, I hope. But uh, the uh, <clears throat> DEET, they're finding, affects the nerve endings on the body. And the, the enzyme 
that is supposed to allow you to send signals to your muscles and so on uh, gets totally disrupted. Uh, people walk around, uh, rats for example, walk around like they're drunk when they're exposed to it and uh, neurological damage happens and as a matter of fact you can commit suicide with DEET. You can drink it and you die. Uh, it's happened. We get 4,000 4,000 calls to 911 in the United States for DEET-related cases each year. 10% of those require hospitalization. Two people died. Now, one of those was a suicide, so that's, but one was an infant. And their uh, excuse in court was, well, it said on the label, don't use it on an infant. Now, I've got a home in the Philippines, and I know the mothers there are aware of DEET, but they've got a choice. If the child gets malaria, it's probably going to die. I had it when I was 55, and I thought I was going to die. So I can see why a, a, a child would die from it. Malaria is not a big deal here in Jamaica, although you did have an outbreak a few years ago. And you do have the mosquito that carries that bacteria. It's not a virus, but it does carry that bacteria. So it could be reintroduced here. The big problem here is the Aedes aegypti. Uh, it carries about every virus there is, including Zika. It says shouldn't be used on infants and because of body mass and so on. And as Charles said, I've always said from the very beginning, um, an infant is still a pretty good size mammal. I mean, it's not like you're talking about an ant or a gnat or a mosquito. If it's killing the infant, I do wonder about maybe what it's doing to me. It might take longer, but it's not going to be a good result. And that's what they're finding with these military studies of guys that have used it a lot in the Persian Gulf and in, in Southeast Asia. So chemicals not necessary for effectiveness. Um, <clears throat> DEET says children under uh, six months to 12 years old should avoid DEET. It's okay for us. Um, <clears throat> but one of the concerns in almost all these articles, they don't want to go too far, other, otherwise uh, it's not going to make it through peer review because they haven't shown that it kills adults very quickly, um, is they have serious concern that long-term effects have not been studied. Very little attention to no attention has been given to long-term effects. And that's where a lot of these new studies are coming online. And I've got an article that I just uh, did. I guess I did it about a year ago. It was a review of the toxic effects of DEET. I can almost double that bibliography now. It has expanded that much. Research is going on not just at Duke, but in universities around the country. We didn't have to do this um, but because we had the rat study. But we actually took it to a lab in New York, AMA Labs. They do a lot of work for um, lotions and so on and so forth, the large cosmetic factories. And <clears throat> we had them apply it to 50 people. Um, the 50 people, you see a row across here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The 50 people got it applied on Monday, on Wednesday, and on Friday. And each time they came back, they looked for a reaction. The reactions were, were uh, stated like this, zero, no reaction at all, nine, severe skin reaction. You may not be able to see from where you're sitting, but this matrix has nothing but zeros in it. So after all that time, and then at the end of that, there's a 24-hour and a 48-hour repeat for all those people. Um, this is the rest of the matrix. And you see one line there that doesn't have zeros in it is because that subject didn't show up those days. Uh, I looked at this and I thought, man, if I could have gotten 50 students to come uh, to my lectures and only had one that didn't show up before the exam, I would be uh, thrilled. <laughs> so actually, they did pretty good on uh, the return visits. Then the no bite, no burn. Um, I kept seeing, which one do you put on first? Do you put on the sunscreen? Do you put on the, the repellent? So I thought, why don't I do one that does both, which is exactly what we did. We use zinc, non-nano zinc oxide, and not very much. There's a lot of SPF rating in a lot of natural oils. So I chose the best ones there. I use beeswax. And I do use non-nano zinc oxide, but it does not enter the bloodstream. And there are no physical, chemical um, sunscreen elements in this at all, zero. Again, we fed this to the rats. And we also did patch tests. At the conclusion of the study, we had sign-offs by a pediatrician and a dermatologist that no reaction occurred with the same format of study. And as a matter of fact, here's the matrix from that. Again, nothing but zeros in that matrix after the three weeks of testing 
And when you add the 24 and 48, it's almost a month of testing. And again, the guy didn't show up for the last uh, few days of the study. But all zeros except for that. Not only did we get the sign off on that, but we got to 31 and a half SPF, and it's broad screen. So in other words, it takes you right up to the visible part of the spectrum. It takes you all the way through the UV, right up to the violet that you can see. So those are the rays that cause cancer. Those are the rays that give you sunburn and so on and so forth. And I think, we're, I think the FDA says you only have to go to around 360. We got to almost 390, 380 something with this in terms of the broad, in terms of the broad spectrum. We went from that to the last product, which is done. Uh, it's tested. It's under actually going under undergoing more tests right now, but we have just a sunscreen alone. I stopped at a bait shop one day because I wanted to show how quickly DEET would kill bait shrimp. Boat captains in Sarasota, when they take you out, they say, if, you, if you've got on repellent and you put your hand in the bait well, I'm going to throw you off the boat because you're going to kill all the bait. So I thought, I want to see how long it takes if I put some DEET on from another uh, company, put my hand in the uh, salt water with, uh, with some bait shrimp, take it out, see how long it takes to kill the uh, shrimp. Uh, it took about 30 minutes. Well, when I stopped to get the shrimp that first day, <clears throat> the guy said, I've been in this business for almost 40 years, um, and I can tell you that sunscreen's even worse than, than DEET. I said, is that right? So I had not heard that. I'd heard stories about the chemical elements in some of the sunscreens. And I stopped on the way back with the shrimp, and I got one of the competitors, one of the most popular brands in the world. I bought it, took it back. Guess how long it took to kill the shrimp with the sunscreen? 15 minutes, half the time as it did to kill the DEET. So it doesn't surprise me that sunscreens are now killing reefs around the world. And again, a shrimp is a fairly large animal to kill in 15 minutes with just five seconds putting your hand in with the, with the bait. <clears throat> Some of the popular elements, oxybenzone, homosalate, octisalate, octocrylene, those are just four <clears throat> of the chemicals that are in the active section of these sunscreens. Just four. There are probably a half a dozen or, or more. <clears throat> oxybenzone, found in mother's milk. You'll find it in the newborn baby. Um, high rates of uh, allergic reaction, and it's toxic, I can tell you that, from the shrimp to aquatic life and reefs. Homosalate, found in mother's milk, skin penetration, and when it breaks down, it forms even more toxic substance that kills reefs and aquatic life. Octisalate, skin penetration, some allergic reaction. Octocrylene, found in mother's milk, very high rates of uh, skin allergy. And again, you saw our, our test with nothing but zeros in that matrix after almost a month of putting it on people's skin. Um, <clears throat> Peer-reviewed studies, uh, research at the National Length of Health is, is suggesting a link between the benzone and poor re reproductive uh, success. Endometriosis, if you don't know what that is, the cells on the inside of the uterus are supposed to be there and nowhere else. You get the sunscreen on your body, and those cells in the uterus start growing outside the uterus. So you're on your way to cancer. You start getting stomach cramps and so on, and that's not a good sign. The sunscreen stuff, the class action lawsuits have already started. I actually think I shouldn't say this. There might be somebody in the room but from DEET. But I think the class action lawsuits with DEET are actually probably going to come around someday with the amount of research that's going on. Safe and effective without toxic chemicals. We looked at the broad screen. Both sunscreen products from Pena 5 satisfied the requirements. Broad screen labeling, we made it all the way up almost to the violet part of the spectrum, which is very unusual. And those two words I'll end with, safe and effective. Thank you. Just wanted to thank Dr. John Halling for sharing so much information with us. I hope we haven't had brain overload. But I'm sure you have questions, because when so much information that you're not accustomed to, but you know, we just want to open the floor to see if there are any questions, because Dr. Harlan and Charles Murray, they're here. They want to make sure any questions that anybody has, that they're prepared to answer them. So any questions? Yes. Not your products not having 
chemicals or toxic chemicals? Because I presume everything has a chemical structure. So could you elaborate on the feature? So if you look on any one of the products, you'll see a PCA registration number there. And that only comes because the product has gone through the necessary testing and approval by them. So all the products have the PCA registration number, and that's how you know that the product has been certified by the government, government of Jamaica through the Ministry of Health. The next is part two to the question. This is a 25B product in the United States. It's called a minimum risk pesticide. And we have to be very careful about saying all natural, absolutely chemical free, and so on and so forth. With the sunscreen, we have no chemical filters. In other words, we're not putting chemicals in to filter the UV light. We're using non-nano zinc oxide and natural oils that have a fairly high SPF, like coconut. Uh, in the case of uh, both of the lotions, uh, we use a, a, uh, a product called triethyl citrate. Triethyl citrate, you look at that and say, I thought the guy said it didn't have any chemicals in it. Well, triethyl citrate is something we eat. It's in our food. It's labeled GRAS by the FDA in the US, generally recognized as safe. Uh, most of these are processed from natural things. Coconut uh, is, is used for MCT. It's used for a lot of medium chain triglyceride kind of oils that we use in cooking and so on. So very good question um, to say all natural is impossible. California is right. You really shouldn't do that. Uh, we don't use any toxic chemicals. And we proved that by the rat study in particular uh, for all of our products have gone through that. And they do not cause any skin reaction problems. And they do not get into the bloodstream. Uh, zinc oxide, nano zinc oxide does get into the bloodstream. It will penetrate the stratum corneum. But non nano zinc oxide will not. Think about and you're like Portmore, for instance, that has a high amount of mosquitoes, but not as much nectar plants. And one of the reasons I brought it up, because urbanization is taking over a lot of our communities, and you might not have the kind of um, plant system that when your mosquito is confused, they would then turn to those nectars. Um, I just wondered if you have done enough testing in Jamaica to make some of the statements that you're making. What's happened with urbanization around the world, and I had colleagues years ago that this is all they did. They looked at urbanization around the world, and it's happening everywhere. People are moving to cities. They're leaving the country because there are no jobs. They're coming to the cities. Cities are bursting at the seams. In the 80s, Egypti, unfortunately, loves the city. They are home-type mosquitoes. Um, they love uh, tires sitting around that have water in them. If you leave a can outside, if you've got a dripping faucet, if your air conditioner is dripping outside, that's enough for her to lay her eggs, and she, you've got another three or 400 mosquitoes ready to come out. Um, she's carrying Zika. She's carrying, in the US, West Nile, encephalitis, um, and dengue. Dengue, in particular, is on the rise worldwide because of urbanization. I was recently in Saudi Arabia, and they've got a huge dengue problem. It's a desert-like place, but yet they have enough rain. In fact, interestingly enough, all the time I was there, it rained every day. <laughs> I thought I was supposed to be in the desert. But uh, they're building uh, Riyadh out. Uh, the cranes everywhere. The city is booming toward the north. And the more that happens, the more the 80s Egypti come in, the more of them there are, the more of you they've got to feed on. They don't need very many plants. They don't feed very, very many plants to get their sugar. Um, and the male, the male would not be alive at all if he didn't have nectar because he never takes a blood meal. He has to live on the sugar. So the sugar's here. There's enough to support both the male and the female. As a matter of fact, she doesn't want blood if she doesn't have the egg if she doesn't have the fertilized egg. It's only then that she wants the blood. Mm -hmm. You mentioned some metrics, but regular and ambient air of rainfalls, is it disturbed? How right. does that impact effectively? The directions are pretty much on the pouch, but sometimes people don't read the directions that carefully. 
In fact, I'm guilty of that myself. I open something up, and uh, I start putting it together before I ever look at the instructions. Um, <clears throat> mosquitoes don't fly very high as a rule. You'll find them high from time to time, but generally they, they don't because they can't take wind. They get blown to the next county in the, in the U.S. quite quickly. So they like to stay low to the ground. They also don't tolerate direct sunlight very well. They like to be in the shade. That's why you see them often in the morning and in, in the evening uh, or at night. But there are mosquitoes that are out all day. <clears throat> but they still prefer the shade to the direct sunlight. So putting the product low and in the shade is important. Um, don't store it where the temperatures are going to rise up above 40 degrees uh, Celsius. Don't put it in the back seat of your car and leave it there for two months because there is a live organism in the zone product. There's not in the lotions, but there is in the zone product. That organism, um, that living animal, um, it's kind of in between. It's sort of a protist and sort of in that weird. But that particular um, living organism can tolerate cold. It can be frozen solid for a number of years, but it doesn't tolerate heat very well. And if the product's not working, and it's been in your back seat of your car for a month with the windows rolled up, that may be why. You may have killed the, you may have killed the yeast. <clears throat> uh, no, but just keep them cool. Uh, just keep it cool. And, and when you do lo locate it in the backyard, low and uh, in the shade, because that's where the mosquitoes are going to be. As a matter of fact, even putting it on the ground under a bush works, work, works well. Uh, I've got a home on the north end of Luzon, uh, near the Cagayan Valley, which is the mosquito capital of the world. You may think that the mosquitoes are bad here, but that area of the Philippines is unbelievable because even if it's not the rainy season, they get 150 inches of rain a year. And even if it's not the rainy season, they're flooding the rice fields anyway. So there's water there 365 days a year. Uh, mosquitoes are absolutely terrible. Um, a lot of the houses don't have uh, the ceiling like we have in here because the tin roofs leak so why put a ceiling in and have to replace it every six months so they just you're looking up at the rafters and the ceiling and the mosquitoes come in under the eaves and you come right into the house at night <clears throat> and as soon as the sun goes down <clears throat> you're not visiting family anymore you're turning off the TV you're going under the mosquito net and going to bed and you don't get out from under the mosquito net until the sun comes up the next morning uh, we've put them in the homes. We've actually put them in the homes there because there's no regulation there about not putting them in the house like there is in the U.S. And they work. Um, you do have to have them in more than one room because if you've got, you, you need for the mosquito to get to the product before it gets to you. If it's been out in the yard for two or three days, they probably have gotten to it and they're not going to be biting you. <clears throat> but if they're in the house and they come in on one side through the thing into one room, you're in the other one sleeping, you go into that other room and your uh, zone product is in that other house, the mosquito is going to bite you because it hasn't visited the zone yet. So the home use, um, a little trickier than outdoors, but if you use more than one, and if you've got, not what we have, but if you've got ceilings where you're pretty well sealed from the outside, the thing to do is put them near the doorway. Put them near a place or even, well, I don't have the, we didn't talk about the spray here tonight, but we are spraying doorways there, and the mosquitoes won't even come through the doorway. They won't come through the threshold. Uh, that product will be out, probably we'll have that for you by Christmas, I think. I'm hoping that we get through all the regulations and so on. But um, it's going to be a little more tricky in the house using the zone product than it is outdoors probably take more than one. So this evening we launched the Mosquito Pack brand um, of a mosquito repellent. It's very safe and effective and right now what we're looking to do is to change the way we operate in Jamaica. For years we have been trying to eradicate and to kill mosquitoes. The truth is, just like the bees, we have to find a way to live together in harmony without impacting each other negatively. The products are all natural. You can put it on your pregnant ladies, you can put it on children at night compared to the competitor product which requires you to wash. If you don't wash during the evening it is penetrating your skin. 
So we give you the six hours protection. We give you the security of no biting. The zone is to protect your home so that you have for 15 days all around your home, no mosquitoes looking for blood. Only the female mosquito really bites and that's because she's looking for a blood meal. These products basically confuses the mosquito and the mosquito is no longer interested in a blood meal but they now will go back to their original diet which is a nectar meal. We have been exposed to a new product that seems to be on the cutting edge and if this product proves to be what it says it is and basically from what I've heard and the research done it should prove to be a very quality product. So we have both the repellent, the lotion that you can put on your skin, and we also have the zone product where you can put it in your backyard and basically it gives you 70 feet of coverage. It confuses the senses of the mosquito. They're not interested in biting humans anymore. They're going back to look for a nectar meal. We are hoping to take this to the market as an industry and to see if we can alleviate a lot of the problems that our clients have. And basically the pest management industry is a very wide one but mosquitoes is a very serious problem in this country and um, I would like to say that I encourage my colleagues in the industry to come on board and to begin to access this product and to see that if it is working the way it says it is then we certainly are going to be going full hundred on this one.